tonight we are going to speak about the importance, why we should all study the Bhagavad Gita. Now some people think Bhagavad Gita is a, a book for Hindu, but actually it's for everybody. Lord Krishna tells us in the Bhagavad Gita, he says, he is the father of all living entities. So Krishna is the father not only of the Indian, not only of the Hindu, but of everybody. We have to understand that the Bhagavad Gita is teaching knowledge and wisdom for everyone. And when we look at the history of the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna himself said that he spoke the Bhagavad Gita millions of years ago to the sun god the sun god, the Vishwa. That is described in the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Lord Krishna said that I instructed the science of yoga to the sun god. And then the sun god gave the knowledge to Manu. Manu was the father of mankind. And then Manu, he gave the knowledge to Ikshvaku. Ikshvaku was a great king on the planet millions of years ago. So in this way, the knowledge was passed through a line of saintly people. They were called Rijashis means they were not only saintly, but they were also kings. They were rulers. And in the past, it was the duty of the rulers, it was the duty of the kings that they would guide the people and show the people the proper example, how to cultivate spiritual knowledge and how to perfect their life, not only materially, but also spiritually. Nowadays, of course, we see that politicians are, they only think about material benefit. And they, when they, when they are campaigning to get votes for the election, they will make promises to the people that we're going to make the country rich and we're going to make your life better. But they do not actually understand what is the real purpose of life. The success in life is not just to only make money because at any time you may be driven out from the material body and you have to die. Not everyone has to die. Nobody can say, I won't die. Everyone who takes birth, they have to die. It's the law of nature not only for the people, for the trees, for the plants, for the animals, the birds, the fish. You know, you have some creatures, they live hundreds of years. And some trees also live hundreds of years. But they also have to die sometimes. So human beings in the Kali Yuga, we don't live very long. 
our duration, our length of life is maximum 100 years, right? If you're 100 years old, oh, people think, well, very great. So most people die after 70, 80, then most people die. So that is the nature of this age. This is called Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga. One of the qualities in this Kali Yuga is a short life, not a very long life. In other ages, long ago, people lived much longer. But now, because this is the Kali Yuga, so they only live a short time. And we see sometimes people 20 years old die. Maybe they're riding their motorbike coming from Baton over to Krapte here. And it's a very dangerous road. It's very windy and hilly. So it's been many accidents. Many people have died on these roads. So it's very dangerous. One man was just saying to me today, he would ride his motorbike to go to temple. And he could go to temple in five minutes on the motorbike. But it's very dangerous. Very dangerous. So it's safer to go on the bicycle. On the bicycle it takes him half an hour. Thirty minutes to ride the bicycle, but not so dangerous as on the motorbike. And we can see here so many motorbike people <laughs> everyone riding the motorbike very fast, but very dangerous also. So, short life. Every day there are accidents. People risk death. And where are they going with the high speed? They're going to eat or to sleep. And you're going to work like that. So people are working to eat and sleep. But who is working to get knowledge? To get self-realization. People get knowledge, they say, no, I go to I go to university, I go to college, I study, and people spend a lot of money also to go to college. The, the fees to get education, very expensive. People think with education, I will get a better job. And you'll be a better sutra, right? You'll be a sutra worker. One lady, she comes here, she was saying, she told her daughter, she graduated from college recently. So she is working in the hotel. So she was telling her daughter, you must take the day off, come for the program at the temple. Oh, she said, no, I cannot, very busy. Now is the peak season, now is so many tourists, it's a high season, have to work. Mother said, better you do your own business. Why are you working in a hotel? Mother was telling her, better you do your own business. Doctor said, for now, let me work. So this is what happens. People take jobs and work. They become sudra, worker. But we want to educate people to become brahmana. Brahmana means to cultivate the mode of goodness. If you simply work all day, <coughs> you simply count 
cultivate the mode of passion and ignorance. The mode of passion. You know, she using time. The, the, a lot of passion in a place like Phuket. And people think, oh, passion, I will enjoy the passion. Even the restaurant will advertise, come and taste the passion. Taste the passion. They will put a lot of chili in the food, right? Make it very spicy. Can you do that in your COVID? this yeah huh? people like the spice they say come and taste the passion of the, when you drive the car they say feel the passion you put your foot on the accelerator and the car goes very fast whoa you're thinking very nice I'm enjoying but the result of passion Rajagun, the result of passion is distress. It always ends in distress. We get suffering. Just like if you eat a lot of spicy food, it's not very good for health. You will get gastric problem or some problem like that. You have to be very careful what we eat. Right? And so in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna gives us instruction talking about yoga. He said, yogi does not eat too much or eat too little. He must eat enough to keep him healthy. Not too much, not too little. Because yoga means to control the senses. And in our body, we have five senses. Right? We have the, the ears to hear, we have the eyes to see, we have the nose to smell, we have the skin to touch, and we have the tongue to taste and to speak also. So of the five senses, the tongue is the most difficult to control. It's the most difficult to control. We have to control not only what we eat, but also what we speak. Speaking is also important. So the yogi learns to control the tongue. Now some yogi, they will do a monavrat, what is called monavrat, means they'll make a vow not to speak. And they will say, if you, if you go to speak, they okay. They won't speak anything. They'll just shake their hand. You know? So they make a vow. They think that way they won't speak any nonsense. But still they have ears, and they will hear a lot of nonsense. They will hear everything. So you don't get away from the problem just by taking the vow of silence. Just being silent does not purify us. I met one young man, he went to live in the cave. And he lived in the cave for one month. And he said when he came out of the cave, after one month, he had more desires than when he had in the beginning. His desires had increased. So just to go away from the world is not the solution to controlling the senses. Eating has to be controlled. Sleeping also has to be controlled. Yogi does not sleep too much or sleep too little. Just as we have to eat, we have to also sleep. But we don't want to eat more or less. We don't want to sleep more or less. 
So yoga is to regulate our life. To practice yoga means you have to regulate your living. And we have to learn what is the healthy yoga lifestyle. So Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna is teaching this knowledge in the Bhagavad Gita. How to practice yoga. So first thing, most important thing, is to understand who we are. So we often ask people, who are you? And they will say, I'm a man, or I'm a woman, or I'm an Indian, or I'm a Chinese, or I'm a Pharaoh, or whatever. Pharaoh? You know Pharaoh? Pharaoh is Thai or foreigner. Foreigner. Why foreigner? So in Basa Thai, in Thai language, we're all Pharaoh. So uh, we're thinking like that, the body. We, we are, who are you? And we were thinking, you know, I'm woman or I'm man. But actually, that is not true. We don't know actually who we are. So Bhagavad Gita begins by teaching the most important, the most basic point in the practice of yoga is that we have to understand who I am. If we don't know who we are, then we do not know what is the purpose of life. We don't know where we're going. Just like if you ask somebody, you know, if you go outside and you say to them, where should I go? Where should I go? They'll ask you, where do you want to go? And if you say, well, I, I don't really know where I want to go, then they'll say that it doesn't matter which way you go. If you go up the hill or down the hill, it doesn't matter, does it? Because you don't know where you want to go. It doesn't make any difference. So, we have to know where do you want to go. And we're all going places. Right? We're living in this body, but we're not going to live forever in this body. One day we have to give up the body. So just as we see ourselves, the body changing, in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes how the body is changing. Said from the young boy, Kumar, Kumar, right? The Krishna Kumari, Kumari is young girl, Kumar is young boy, and there's Kumar, and then Yovanam, young man, Yova, the youth, the young people, and then we have Jara, the old people, right? old age. So, and then, Dehino Smenyata Dehe Komaram Yovanam Jara Tata Dehantara Pratir Diras Tatra Namoyot. You give up the body and take another body. So one who is Dira, one who has controlled the mind and senses, they are not disturbed about the change in the body. They can live without anxiety because they understand that I am a soul. For the soul, there is no birth and there is no death. What is taking birth? Only the body. The soul doesn't take birth and the soul doesn't die. The soul is eternal. So we have to understand that we are not the body, but we are the soul 
living in the body. And just like we change the dress, we change the body. We, sometimes we put on the sari, sometimes we put on the jeans and jacket, sometimes you, you have the gopi dress, you have different clothes. So the, the dress changes, but the person in the dress is the same. The same way the body changes, childhood to youth to old age, the body is changing, but the person is the same. So Lord Krishna teaches this basic point to Arjuna in the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita. To convince Arjuna and to convince all of us, first of all, that we are not the body. Arjuna, he was thinking that he didn't want to fight. And one of the reasons why he didn't want to fight was because he thought, if I fight, I maybe I will kill people. But Krishna said, no, you can't kill people. They'll change their body, but you're not going to kill them. Because we're all souls, spirit souls. So that is the first thing Krishna teaches in the Bhagavad Gita. But then Krishna goes on to speak about karma yoga. He doesn't immediately speak about bhakti yoga because people are not ready for that yet. So first of all, he teaches them about a type of yoga which will let them work because people like to work. Everybody likes to work. If you don't have a job, you feel, oh, I have no job. We, we like to have something to do. It's not good to be idle. It's very difficult sometimes if you have no job. So we like to work. The nature of the soul is to be active. The soul cannot stop. It's just like the mind. It's always thinking. So many thoughts come in the mind at every moment. So controlling the mind is difficult. We have to understand karma yoga teaches us to work, but to work in a way in which we become detached from the result of the work. Usually people are very attached you know, when you have a business, just like here at Phuket, maybe you have a little shop, and if you do some business and you sell something, you feel very good, you think, oh, I made so much profit, I made this money, and, and I'm going to buy more goods, and I will make more. And in this way we plan how we will become rich, you know. And we're only thinking about money. Okay? So it's, it's necessary, but it's not the only thing. We have to be careful. So Krishna teaches work, but don't be attached to the result. Detached work. That's important because that gets us free from the reactions. You don't have to suffer reactions. When you work in a detached manner, so Krishna is encouraging Arjuna. Arjuna was worried that if I fight, I will get sinful reactions. But Krishna said, no, if you fight as a service for Krishna, then you won't get any reactions. There's no reactions. When you do it as a, a duty, 
We do this as out of a sense of duty, not just to enjoy the result, but a sense of duty. So Krishna encourages Arjuna to karma yoga. But then Krishna also goes on to explain more about jnana yoga. Because often people work and they don't know who they're working for. They don't know why they're doing this. They may give charity. They may give donations here and there. But they don't know what's good and what's bad. They don't know who to give it to. They give it to everyone. They think, oh, it's all good. And they think everyone is God. They have these different ideas. So Lord Krishna speaks about knowledge, transcendental knowledge. That we have to understand, first of all, not only that we're not the body, but we're souls. But then you have to go on to understand more. What is the position of the soul? Just like if we think, I'm not the body, I'm a soul. But then, what is the position of the soul? What is the soul supposed to do? Does the soul have any duty? Is there any work for the soul? Sometimes people think, if I'm a soul, I shouldn't do anything. They want to stop work. They don't want to do anything. So that is not good. We, Lord Krishna didn't tell Arjuna, don't fight. Lord Krishna told Arjuna, you have to fight. You should do your duty. Arjuna was thinking, oh, it's not very good. But Krishna said, no, it's good. You do your duty. Do your work. If you don't work, if you don't do that work, you do some other work. Because no one can be idle, not even for a moment. So if you don't work, as a, and you're, if you're not going to do your, your job, you'll do some other job, you'll find some other work to do. So Krishna wants Arjuna to come to the platform of knowledge, understand his position as a soul, and understand that there's not only one soul, but there's another soul. There's the super soul, which is there in all bodies, in all hearts. There's the soul and the super soul. And the super soul is the expansion of Krishna, who is in the heart of all living entities. And the super soul is like the overseer and the permitter. He's watching everything. And he is guiding also. The super soul is giving knowledge. Gives knowledge to the intelligence. And then the intelligence gives that knowledge to the mind. And then the mind gives that knowledge to the senses. So we get information from the super soul. Krishna is telling us, this is good or this is bad. Don't do this, do that. We get guidance from the super soul. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, he, give, he can give knowledge and he can give forgetfulness. And he can allow us to remember also. He allows us to forget because sometimes we want to enjoy so much. So Krishna allows us to forget. Just like, you know, we, we know sometimes, we know certain things we shouldn't do. 
but because we want to enjoy so much, we're thinking so much, oh, I really wanted to do this, I really wanted to eat that, I really wanted to drink this, and I wanted to do that. We have these different thoughts. So, because we wanted it so badly, sometimes Krishna just allows us to forget that it's wrong. And then when we forget it's wrong, then we go and do it. And then, of course, we suffer. We get reactions. But sometimes Krishna can also, He will also, from the heart, as the super soul, He will give us knowledge. He will remind us, Oh, you better not do that. You know you did that before. Bad, bad trouble. Just like sometimes the man is a criminal. He may steal something. So he gets arrested and he suffers. He has to go to prison and be in the out. You know, he may think, oh, I don't want to steal again. That was terrible. I have to go to prison. But some other time the man goes to prison and he comes out and he steals again. He steals, he doesn't stop, he didn't learn. So Krishna is in the heart, but Krishna is, he's guiding, but sometimes we don't hear. We don't hear him speaking to us from the heart. So this is the problem, we have to hear. And we, that's how we, why we get knowledge from Krishna. <coughs> so Krishna gives us knowledge about the soul and the, the super soul and the relationship between the two. And he gives us knowledge about the nature of the mind, how the mind is always thinking about enjoying, has different desires. So in the practice of yoga, we have to learn to control the mind, to make the mind obedient, to get the mind to do what we want. Often we just do what the mind wants. We don't really know what is actually the soul, what the soul wants. We're only hearing the mind. The mind is saying do this. We're not hearing what is the real need of the soul. So we have to conquer the mind. Higher than the mind, is the intelligence. So intelligence guides us just like we, we know it's wrong to steal. So the intelligent person learns, he thinks, I won't steal, it's wrong. But some other people, they don't listen to the intelligence. Although they know it's wrong, they do it anyway. So the intelligence is seated next to the soul and the, the soul is giving that knowledge to the intelligence. You can see within the, the, the human, within the body, all of these different things are there. We have a soul, we're all souls, and we have a subtle body we have the intelligence, we have the mind, and we have the senses. So there's also false ego. Ego. That ego, that is our identification, our, our attachment to the material things. We're, we have to purify the subtle body, the ego, the intelligence and the mind. We have to conquer over the desires because we have desires. That's why we are all here in this world, in the material world. We have come here because we have 
material desires. And these material desires are based on enjoyment. We want to enjoy. We want to be the Lord. We, we have to learn what is the mood of yoga. Yoga is to teach us to become the servant rather than the master. In one way we have to be the master, we have to be the master of our mind and our senses. But at the same time we have to recognize we are not the supreme master. There is one supreme master over everyone and that is the super soul. And the super soul is the expansion of Krishna. So we have to learn the relationship between Krishna and the living entities, all of us. We are all related to Krishna. He is the master and we are the servant. Just like in the body, there are many parts in the body. The hand is used to feed. When we, when we eat, we use our hands to put the food in our mouth. We use our tongue to speak. We use our eyes to see where we're going. So we're getting a lot of information from the senses. But we have to learn how to use that information in the proper manner. Actually, all of the senses are meant to be used in the service of Krishna. Just like our tongue is meant to be used to chant Hare Krishna and to also read scriptures like the Bhagavad Gita, and our ears are meant for hearing about Krishna, to hear the chanting of the holy name, and to hear scriptures like Bhagavad Gita. And our eyes are meant for seeing the beauty of the deity, to come and see the deity. And we can use our eyes also to read the scriptures. This is proper use of our eyes. And our nose is meant for smelling the incense offered and the flowers which are offered. That is proper use of the nose. Our hands are meant to be used in the service of Krishna. Just like when we chant, we use our hands to count on the beats and we use also our hands when we are cooking for Krishna. We go to the kitchen, we will cut the vegetables, we will use our hands. So the hands are also used to clean the temple. When we sweep the temple and wash the floor in the temple, that is using the hands in the service of Krishna. When we have Rati Atra, then we use our hands to pull the chariot, right? And they will have a rope. And we use our hands to pull the chariot. So that is proper use of the hands, using them in the service of Krishna. And our legs are meant to be used for the service of Krishna. We use our legs to walk to the temple. And we use our legs to dance in the kirtan. As you were doing this evening, you were chanting and also dancing. So that is proper use of our legs. So all of the different parts of our body they are meant to be used in the service of the Supreme Lord. But because we have forgotten Krishna, we use everything 
in the service of Maya. We, we forget Krishna and we only remember me, I. We're thinking I am the best, I am the enjoyer. We're thinking in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes this mood. He said, Ishwaraham aham bhogi sidoham balavam sukhi Ishwaraham He's thinking, I am the controller. Aham bhogi I am the enjoyer. Sidoham I am perfect. Balavam I am strong. Suki, I am happy. So, in this way, the Asura is thinking his life is successful. You see, Bhagavad Gita describes two natures. There is the Devi Sampat and Asuric Sampat. Devi Sampat means devotee. And Asuric Sampat means demon. There's only two natures, either devotee or non-devotee. People don't like to be called demons. Let me just say non-devotees. But in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said Asura. So, we can all become devotees. Everyone can become devotee just simply by hearing and associating with devotees. We come into the association of devotees and we hear and we chant and gradually we also become devotees because Krishna is in everyone's heart. It just simply takes some time for people to hear and to chant and if they practice regularly they can also become devotee. Prabhupada gives an example that just like a young child, a young child can walk but they have to practice. When you have a young baby in the beginning they cannot walk but gradually when they become like eight, ten months, one year, then they start to crawl and to walk. So that walking ability is there. It just takes some time for the child to develop that ability. So the same way, um, the ability to be servant of Krishna, to do bhakti yoga, is there in everyone. Everyone can serve Krishna. So the, the, the process of Bhagavad Gita, teaching of Bhagavad Gita, is for everyone. It doesn't matter who they are and it doesn't matter what age they are. It is told there was one, there, there, there were, there was one, the, one person was in the womb of the mother and he became a great devotee. Who was that? Who knows? Who was that in the womb of the mother became great devotee? Huh? Prahlad, yes, Prahlad Maharaj. And there were two young boys became devotees. There were young boys, who were young boys that became devotees? Who was that? Became a devotee when there was a young boy. Huh? Dhruva, yes, Dhruva Maharaj, right? Dhruva Maharaj was a young boy, he became a devotee. And then there was a young man also, became devotee in his youth. That was Ambarish Maharaj. Maharaj Ambarish became a devotee, he was a young man. And then there was somebody in their old age became a devotee. You know who that was? Became a devotee in old age? Dhritarashtra. 
You know Dhrita Rashtra? Old okay. man, all his sons got killed in the battle of Kurukshetra. And then Vidura, his brother came and preached to him. So Dhrita Rashtra became a devotee in old age. And then somebody became a devotee at the time of death. Who was that? Ah, Anjamila, yes. Anjamila at the time of death became devotee. And there was somebody else became a devotee after getting liberation. After death, he took his next birth and then he became devotee. You know who that was? After he got liberation, then became a devotee. Chitra Ketu. Chitra Ketu. Do you know the story of Chitra Ketu? Huh? Chitra Ketu. He had, he had many wives. He wanted a son. Couldn't get a son. He had many wives. Then he got the blessing. He got a blessing from Narada and Angira. All right. You can have a son. And the son will bring you happiness and distress. So he got the son. He's very happy. But then the other wives who never did son, they were all jealous. So they poisoned the son. And so the son died. And when the son died, then Maharaj Chitraketu was very old. He lamented so much because he was so happy to get the son. And then he lost the son. So he was so broken hearted, he cried so much. So then, somehow, he got associated, he, he gave up the body, next life, he became a great king. He became a, he became a demigod, a Vijayadhara. And that was when he got liberated, he became devotee. He became a great devotee after the liberation. So, you can see at any point in the life you can become the devotee. It doesn't matter what age or where you are. And you can come from any country because it's stated in the prayers of Sukadeva Goswami. Sukadeva Goswami describes, he says, Kirita, uh, Munandra, Tulinda, Pukasha. Abhira Shumba Yavana Kashadaya Yane Chapapa Yada Pashraya Shraya Sajanti Tasmai Prabhavishna Venama Sukadeva Goswami is talking about who can get delivered. And he mentions all the different races. He said Kirita. Kirita means African. African. Now sometimes we say African or land of thieves. <laughs> Prabhupada went to Africa. <laughs> he said land of thieves. Very dangerous place, you know. They go to Africa. They can easily get robbed. Prabhupada went there and the servant proud to 